Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. A little bit of Top Gun theme music here today to get us in the mood for a 1980s themed pilot's watch. This one. Now 2018 is the 100 year anniversary of the formation of the British Royal Air Force and to commemorate and capitalise, AVA are releasing four different models, stylistically loosely based on four different decades of RAF history. They released the 1920s and the 1940s models earlier on this year and they are about to launch the 1960s and the 1980s. They're taking pre-orders at the moment. I'll leave a link in the description of the video below. You can sign up for that one if you're interested. I will also leave a 20% discount code for this watch or anything else you like on the Aviate website. Now, I reviewed their 1940s model at the beginning of this year and I quite liked it. Type B Flieger with a twist, small second but a nice clean design and pretty good value for money. Today it's the turn of the 1980s and unfortunately, like a lot of the stylistic choices made in the 1980s, this Aviate is a complete dog's breakfast. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Ouch! Did you just say that, Jody? Looks like this will be the last AV8 that you get sent for a while anyway. Well, you know, I try and be honest about the watches that I get in for review on the channel. This is a watch review channel. There seems to be little point in just endlessly saying that stuff is good and that you should buy it when I don't believe that that is the case. But like all the pieces that I get in, there is a mixture of good and bad. And indeed, there is a mixture of good and bad in this AV8 Flyboy Centenary 1980s edition. The good, well, the packaging is pretty decent. Big outer box and the same kind of inner picnic hamper that I got with the 1940s one, all very nice indeed. And once you pop the top on the hamper, you're greeted not only by the watch, but also a limited edition stainless steel card representing the decade in question with a little bit of the contextualization, a little bit of the RAF history of the period. And it's made well enough, it's a solid feeling watch, three piece case, 316 cell stainless steel, all brushed apart from a little bit of polish on the chamfered edge there, Nice little touch shows that they've gone just beyond the norm with this one. Piece of single dome sapphire crystal on top, which is good at the price. In fact, the price is good overall. 220 great British pounds. Uh, that comes in at around 280 US dollars. Not unreasonable. Movement in this one is also kind of reasonable for the specs. It's a Miota 8218. Now these hand wind, but they don't hack. It's a kind of decorated version of the 8215 with the skeletonized rotor. Never quite sure why companies insist on putting their branding right in the middle of a see-through case back. 50 meters water resistance, which is perfectly acceptable. And they're always reasonably accurate, reasonably consistent. These ones, 42 hour power reserve, 21,600 vibrations per hour. Coming in there just over the 10 seconds per day fast. I always find that Miotas run slightly fast, Seikos run slightly slow, so can't complain about the movement in this one anyway. And I do like the strap. AV8 are part of the Dartmouth brand group of companies that also own James McCabe and Spinnaker. And they seem to get the straps from the same place. Big, thick, and looking like a quality number there. Very nice deep etched AV8 logo on the brushed buckle. And it's made of Cordura, Cordura upper leather backing. Cordura, very appropriate for a military themed watch. Although I'm not sure if these have been bonded properly. I'm not sure that this won't go a little bit tufty with time, but certainly initially out of the box, a good looking strap. Sadly, it all comes undone though when you start to look at that dial. 42 millimeters in diameter, just under 15 mil thick, uh, 48 lug tip to lug tip, 22 millimeter lug width, and on the supply Cordura and leather strap as noted, this one coming in at just under 90 grams. But I think they've just overstyled this one. I'll pop up a picture of the 1920s. Yeah, cathedral hands there, all very nice, little bit of texture on the dial also. 1940s, I did like this one as noted. Type B Flieger with a twist that small second hand. Again, plenty of depth and some texture. But I think the 1960s as shown and the 1980s, they've just over egged the pudding. They've just put too much unnecessary details on the dial. And as a result, there's kind of no cohesion with this one. It's just a little bit all over the place. They've tried to do something interesting with the small seconds, turning it into a flight instrument, cockpit instrumentation. I've seen this before on some of the Havan Tuvali pieces coming out of Taiwan. 
Only problem is it basically renders the small second hand useless. It is almost impossible to try and work out what's going on, let alone effectively time something. And I'm not sure what's going on with those baton indices there. One length at the one, the two, a short one at the three, the four sits a little differently. It sits a little further back, as does the nine, and they're not loomed. I'll put up a loom video, and as you can see, only the hour and the minute hand are loomed. Now, I mean, there's a reasonable amount of loom on them, sword, shaped, plenty of surface area. It does say super luminova, but it doesn't last an incredibly long amount of time. And if I put a picture of the supposed loom from the Aviate website, you can see the discrepancy. The batons in the watch in reality are not loomed. It says they're loomed in the photo, but they are not loomed in reality. So they'll need to rectify that one. And then there are the three little screws around the small second subdial, one in the middle of it and two down the bottom. Not sure whether they're molded plastic or they actually form part of the structure of the watch, but uh, each of them points at quite a different angle. It's just all a little bit overdone for my tastes. There's that cross here in the middle. Again, I understand RAF style. But if you have a look at the, the top section of the watch there, the only bit of the dial that actually looked clean, they've made it translucent. So you can actually see the date wheel underneath. You can see little bits of the movement there. Again, just not quite sure why they did that. Things get a little better, I suppose, when you put the watch on wrist. Relatively short lug to lug and 42 mil diameter means it wears very well indeed. But I guess the point about Flieger watches, pilot style watches, is that they're supposed to be legible. 42 mil helps with that, but then they've put so much detailing, unnecessary detailing on the real estate of the dial that it doesn't actually work out all that legible. There it is, a bit more perspective, a little higher up. Nice strap, as noted, 22 mil lug width, I think. Nicely in proportion for the diameter, but just a little bit overcooked. Spring has sprung, or at least it's trying to sprung. Bit of sunshine out there. Now, normally I would be keen on a piece of single dome sapphire, big into distortion on a dial, but I think it just detracts again. There's a little too much going on when you add the distortion into the mix. And no AR coating by the looks of it on that sapphire. Again, for a pilot's watch, really should have some AR coating not helping legibility, which was already a bit of a struggle. So um, this whole video has been one long moan and niggle session, hasn't it? Maybe I should do the opposite. What are the positives of this watch? Well, if you like the look, then go for it. Don't let my opinions hold you back. They are just the opinions of one man after all. I think it's well priced and I think the dimensions are nice, well specced. That meal to movement is perfectly reasonable. I've looked at much more expensive watches containing the same movement. Always nice to see sapphire and crystal on the watch, but my recommendation would be to opt for one of their other versions instead. I think the 1920s and 1940s, both much cleaner, much more resolved designs than the bit of a mess that is the 1980s. But then again, the 80s, most people were a bit of a mess, weren't they? So there you have it, the Aviate Flyboy Centenary 1980s edition, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's not all about the price to specs ratio. Stylistically, this one is a bit of a horror story. It is absolutely all over the place. If you like the watch, by all means, go for one of the other versions. I think it's a decent value offering. It's well made, strap's fantastic, but I just couldn't look at that dial all day, every day. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.